Hello guys, in this tutorial we're going to create materials and render this model which we created in previous tutorial. Uh, so let's open this model. Okay, and as you remember we just added the basic material so that we know which part is what. So this is a, is a black material, like black metal. But this part, as you see, is a little bit light, like something like a silver or titanium, not as dark as this material, as well as this background back sides. I guess these are same materials, but this one are a little bit like yellowish tint. Or maybe it's because of those are these yellow lights. Okay, let's start creating our materials. So let's isolate this and add our environment. So I'm using a Corona as a render. So let's choose our render. I'm choosing Corona render. And let's activate interactive rendering for this extended viewports and Corona Interactive. Right now it's gonna show us black screen because we don't have any lights here. Uh, first let's fix our resolution. So I'm using HD 16 to 9. So let's see it a little bit like this. Okay now as you see it's filled with black but because we don't have any lights let's add some lights. When I, and after that you're gonna see changes but why not you seeing any changes yes let's lock this viewport because I don't wanna my rendering change when I press different viewports I wanna render in perspective view so I'm pressing lock button here in quad perspective so now when I can when I press another report it's not changing now I can move the lights and it's changing okay but I don't wanna light my object with the ordinary lights I wanna use HDR map to light my scene and that's why let's create HDR map in our material slot so just select one of them here from go to get material and from the open window we go all the way down and find the corona and here we find corona bitmap double click and it opens for us to find our HDR maps my HDR maps are here I'm using HDR heaven maps but I think we need to find the interior okay this one is not bad I guess Let's open it. Open. And this HDR goes right here. And now we need to add this HDR to our environment. For this, we press button 8. And from this window, we drag our HDR and put it here. And choose instance so that when we change the values, it changes here automatically. Okay, now we see that. Oh we have nice lighting and environment but i don't want to see this background image for this i'm gonna go here to scene and go down and from environment all right i'm gonna click direct visibility all right and it means like you change the color of environment but lightning and reflections also comes from hdr anyway so i don't want this dark i maybe choose this a little bit gray okay and I'm also going to copy this material uh, color and I'm going to create a plane under our object under our light okay but I don't want to 
plane to be in any color. I want this plane to be color of the background. That's why I'm going to create a shadow catcher material. And I'm going to drag this and add to this uh, plane and change the color to the background color. And as you see, we have no seam here. Uh, I, I think it's only possible with the shadow catcher material, but uh, even if I take normal Corona material and drag it here and copy this material, it's not going to have the same result. It's only work with the shadow catcher material. Okay, that's it. Let's uh, start creating our materials. So this was the black metal. Let's convert it to Corona material. And order add stark color. But actually, let's see. Yes, it looks like scratchy metal. It has also the glossiness variations, like not ordinary. And it also has uh, these veers. As you see here, little veers has on the edges. And it's totally normal that all the metals, when people use them, has a little bit scratching over the time and it gets like a little bit brighter on the edges. So we're gonna do exact same results in max and firstly let's check if our model is right now i guess is, i think our screen because it has really strict edges and it's not real in in real life no no, no object is this sharp that's why i guess we need to add a little chamfer to this like we double click on this and press ring to select all these sharp edges and add chamfer but not this big a little very subtle we also add one extra segment here And now let's 0 0.2 maybe, no 0, maybe just 1, okay, I guess 1 is not so bad, but let's add extra segments here, okay, let's add smooth, okay, and now let's add chamfer to these parts. Because without the chamfer, it won't good look, look good. Okay, let's make a little bit smaller. Okay. Good, now let's add chamfer to these parts. Let's select all of them and add chamfer. Maybe a little bit smaller. Okay. Let's add chamfer to this part too. I guess we it's better maybe we add a turbo smooth to this part because it will not be good or maybe we just fix this sides and then add chamfer because like with this topology the chamfer won't work so let's select let's do this from here select this polygon this vertex and this vertex and that connect let's do the same over here and then let's remove these parts. 
so it's like topology goes all the way here this way it will work so let's do same with these parts now let's remove the edges that we don't need now for instance uh, we have unused vertices and used edges here let's press ctrl and backspace to remove the vertices too ok let's select these ones too this edge this, this, this Okay, why I said we need to press control and backspace because if we just press remove the vertices will stay but if we press control and backspace vertices will be deleted too okay so now let's select these edges and press loop and we're gonna see that all the edges selected because now we have right topology and like polygons flow all the way here and now we can do our chamfer and that's it that's great maybe we just add chamfer to these parts to like smooth them a little bit say so chamfer and that's it. That's great. Now let's end this light and like is light again. Okay, now let's see. Let's save our scene. Okay, now let's activate the car to my interactive render <clears throat> and bring it closer. Okay, now let's add our materials so we have black and because let's open the image and see it has a reflection let's add our reflections it's one when we add one it gets too much reflections okay let's make it glossiness a little bit okay but this as I see from this image our glossiness map we our glossiness is not same everywhere like it's because of its used it gets dirt and scratches and that's why the sections are not same everywhere and for this we're gonna use our glossiness map it's just a black and white texture that I found and that's it it's just a black and white dirty image and we're gonna use this image in our glossiness map I guess it's does it work like this we just need to drag it to the material slot and then we take this map and then we copy this map to our glossiness slot and right away we see the difference but um, in order to create really good glossiness reflections we need to texture to apply in all our model I to have UVs for this let's see how the texture applied to our model and as we see it's stretched and that's why let's turn off this and go here and need to fix the UVs I guess these cylindrical parts are okay but mm, these parts are not maybe we just take this this and these parts and add a box mapping we add UV W map and choose box and then fix the gizmo ok 
okay like this and for this part we gonna oh no not this part we open the group and because we made instance we're gonna use only one and all the rest will be applied automatically so we use box mapping technique here too something like this let's close maybe we could do this we just take copy of this map and add here paste that's exactly what we want but for these parts we just take UVW map and use it as cylindrical and this way we get right reflections maybe just make it a little bit okay and maybe we just rotate the model itself not the gizmo but model itself so that they doesn't look identical open okay i guess it's fine now let's close the groups okay that's it let's turn off the image and go back here okay maybe first for the test purposes we just get rid of this color and we just take our shadow catcher material and drag this HDR into that and as you see it's just entire image here we just environment projection and that's the better result and maybe we go here and for now we remove this direct visibility override so that we see the HDR in the background okay that's it and let's make it a little bit brighter okay so let's see our model from different angles and I guess our reflection strength is too much for this because it's really high maybe we just go to our material and decrease the reflection amount from 1 to 0 0.5 okay also the glossiness amount is to get high let's make it and because we have image here our number is not working now even if i make it zero nothing will change because we have image here but we can mix also this number and image together for instance if we have reflection glossiness we get turn off this now we will use this number for instance if i make it 0 0.8 it gets reflections but all every part of this model will be the same but we don't want this so let's do that let's activate reflection glossiness but use only 50 percent of this so it takes 50 percent of this image and 50 percent of this number so this will be a little change this will look cool that's it so now we're going to create these side parts which is as you see from here let's make it bigger as you see from here these corners are like teared up and we see the bright metal underneath so let's add this effect for this i'm going to create another layer material like i'm what i'm going to do is create a layered material and put one this black metal and i'm, I'm going to create a second material which is the chrome so 
I'm when I'm on this material, I'm going to click here, Corona material, and I'm gonna choose Corona layer material. Press OK, and it's gonna ask us, do you want to keep this old material? And old material is this black. I'm gonna say yes, I want to keep. Press OK, and now as you see, our black material metal went to the base material, and now I'm gonna I can add a lot a lot of materials here. So let's add first material and it's gonna be chrome and because it's this material is on top of the black metal we don't see black metal so what I'm gonna do is turn off the fuse and increase the reflection all the way up and increase the fresnel to 99 so it gets metallic and now because we have glossiness one it looks like chrome but if we decrease it it will get like a little bit glossy so let's say I'm happy with the results and let's make it seven okay let's go one level up black and now as you have a chrome material this much let's type it so that we don't confuse it Shiny metal. Okay, and our black metal. So now we need to define which parts is gonna be uh, shiny metal and which parts is gonna be uh, black metal. So we use this mask to define these areas, and I'm gonna use as a mask our Corona round edges material, and it basically defines the edges for us, and that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna use corner edges, and as you see, the old edges went white. But this is too much for us. I want it to be a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna use one millimeter on this way. As you see, the subtle details like this. Maybe use it 1.5. Okay, great. And this material is really procedural now. And for instance, if I'm going to create a cylinder and I add this material to the cylinder, and as you see right away, our cylinder has this size. And if I move this into our model, like here. I'm gonna see that it affects our other metal too. So it's really exactly what we want. So let's delete this. Okay. Now let's add, for testing purposes, maybe we just need to add a little bit dirt, very subtle. And maybe this bright material metal is too bright for the exact this image. Maybe we just go to shiny metal, and uh, this is okay. This is shiny, and we decrease the reflections to zero point five, so it gets a little bit dark. Maybe point three. It doesn't get too bright. Okay, so now we have sample effect that looks cool. Okay, maybe we make it 0.4. Okay, so we can add dirt too. For instance, let's 
and layer two on top of everything here we can create corona material again and just use this third color if the object was white or bright color we're gonna use we would use the dark color for the dirt but if because our model is dark we're gonna use light color for the dirt it's like something sandy okay just color nothing more and we're gonna add ambient occlusion we go down and find our own ambient occlusion and choose OK. And now we need to change because black and white is not right here. Okay, let's decrease the distance. Like when, let's make it 10 millimeters. Let's make it 50. And as you see, there is a dirt in the places that we really accumulate here. But we don't want it, this dirt to be this much. And that's why we're going to decrease one of these colors. Maybe uh, I have one real white. Let's make it darker. Let's Make it bigger and see if it looks good. Yeah, maybe a little bit more, but let's make it 10. And by doing this, we're going to have a very little effect, which gives realism. OK. Now I'm going to add, OK, this object is far away. Let's bring it back. Now let's add our bronze metal. Let's copy this color and add corona material. Let's give this copied material to the reflection and add reflection. And now we don't need our diffuse color. We can add some metal. And let's increase the Fresnel to 50 and let's add closeness to like 0.7 mm -hmm. this looks good let's bring it closer maybe a little bit brighter okay now let's create silver material. Is this silver material I used for this? Let's cancel and let's pick up with the, let's pick up from those objects. Yes. Now let's create Carola material we have. Let's immediately get rid of the diffuse and Increase the flexions, 99. Okay, and let's add colossiness, and that's it. That's it. What else do we have? Let's see these parts. If it's working, looking right. Yes, it looks right. We just need to add the glass material to these parts. Also, we need to add, like, maybe we just use this shiny metal. Let's copy it here. Shiny metal on these areas. Now let's. Uh, it reflects it back. Yeah, that looks cool. Okay, now let's create glass material. Corona material. Reflections all the way up. Refraction all the way up. Now let's drag. Okay. 
and drop here. Okay, now as I see, it looks like a magnifying glass because it's empty inside. Let's open the group. And what exactly we need to do is give this object the thickness. So let's go here inside the shell modifier. Cool. But we make sure that <coughs> it's going to inner mount, not outer, like five zero point five millimeters inside. And that's cool. Let's see. Yeah, that's cool and what we have here. Okay, also we need to add this shiny metal to these parts. So let's go here, choose, and add this. And let's do the same with this object in the group. Take these objects and add. Also do the same with here. Okay. Now we need to add light materials like which one is glowing so let's go here and select all these things inside let's get rid of screws and isolate so let's Select all of these and apply a material. Okay, now let's we can end isolate. We can close. Okay, let's not close. Okay, let's see. Okay, for this effect, let's turn off the HDR or let's turn off the intensity of the HDR and we can do it from here we can go to the map HDR map and go here to output and we can decrease it from here HDB level we use it 0.1 and it gets darker and this is our model this is our material for the lights so let's add caramel light material And as we see, it gets light, but because it's really small, we need to add a lot of intensity here, like 100 and see, okay, it gets brighter. Maybe we make it 500. And also we gonna add bloom here. Let's change the color to uh, yellowish. Okay, now we're gonna add bloom and we are adding heat from here, like camera effects, blue and glare, enable and make it like 5, glare intensity 5 and let's make it glare lower and let's 
see after some if after some times it gets better we're gonna leave it like this but if this doesn't help we need to increase the thickness like 0.2 millimeters and now it's better Yes, now it's better, but now we will increase the intensity so that we can see a thing there. Let's make it 50 and see how it looks. Yeah, it looks cool. We can use color intensity and color shift to get different results. Like if you change the color intensity, color shift, you get different color than the real light color, but it's better to leave it like this. Like zero. So we got exact color which we used here. Maybe we need to change the color intensity too. Okay, that's it. Okay, what else we left? We need to add this cool bumpy cable material and I guess I have an idea how I'm gonna do it so I really like how it looks with glow and after time sometimes it fix itself it's not okay to look like like dot dotty things to look great Okay, we also have a nice stir effect here, and also we have nice edge layer details. Okay, and uh, if we, for instance, increase the exposure here, it will look much better. Okay, now let's, for now, let's leave it like this and let's increase the intensity of our HDR. Let's make the RGB level 1. Okay. So let's for now isolate these cables. Isolate them. Now let's add material, it's like bronze, let's change the name, cable, and let's add this material for here. Now we need to add these dumpy things here, and I guess I'm going to use the pump map for this, and I'm going to add the checker. Let's press checker to see. Let's go to the line first. And let's say generate mapping coordinates. Okay. Now we can use turbo smooth. Okay. So as I'm seeing, it's black and down and white and top. And that's because our checker material is too big. Let's add 10. No, 10 is too big. Let's maybe add 5. And I'm going to add 50. So let's add 200. And it looks cool. 
But the one thing I don't like it about it is this bump is too high. That's why I'm going down and decrease the bump to 0.3, maybe 0.5. And it looks cool now. We could use the displacement, but we, actually there's no need to use displacement. But if for sake of the test, it's this. So let's swap it here. Swap. And as we see, it gets really bigger because our max level is five, I mean 10. Let's make it zero. And let's decrease it. So I want these black parts go inside, not outside. Make it five. And actually, we get nearly the same result. So that's why I don't want to use this. I just it makes our scene heavier if I use displacement. The bump is really light, so let's turn off displacement and swap it back to bump, and I get nearly same result. So let's leave it like this. Checker, let's make it two, four, that's four is better. Okay, let's end isolate. Let's close the groups. Close, that's it. Let's isolate. And now we can change our background. Oh, I guess I forget to select other ones. Let's isolate. Now we can change our background. HDR image, I guess. I mean, let's see what else we have. But first, let's save our scene. Okay, let's change background. Skylit garage, short tunnel. I guess these ones are all outside HDRs. Okay, let's try this one. We can turn HDR from here. Let's, if we increase the numbers, HDR will rotate. But this is too dirty place for this kind of lamp to stay. Choose different, maybe pure side living. This one I guess is better. Scene is too bright. Let's Make it zero. Okay, now let's go back to our visibility override and also remove this HDR from here. And this way we're gonna have nice smooth background And now we have our model and materials ready and let's press render and see how it looks like. Maybe we just make it brighter a little bit. Ok, 
Okay. Now let's press render. Let's add regions to make rendering fast. Longer. These glossy parts will take a little bit longer, that's why I'm adding regions here, so that it calculates faster. Parts. As you see, we got this kind of looking reflections here. But I guess the color of these bulbs are not white like ours. We made a mistake in this, but it's not so important we can change it later it's like if we change the color of these bulbs we get exactly the same looking model and I especially like these reflections like spiral looking reflections and we get the same result too this one is I guess ready this one is ready so let's make them calculate faster. This one is ready too.
So let's stop it and save this in the steampunk folder. Let's try to change color of the glass. And maybe we see the details, how it looks. Let's change the color of the glass. Go here and add it to a fraction, maybe. But I guess it's not a good idea. Let's make it white again and go to volumetrics. Let's add to scattering color. And let's change the distance to five. 50. I guess it needs to go here. Yes, we add. Let's see if we have any difference. Maybe we change it back. Okay, 50. Let's see if we have any difference. Maybe we make it 5. It's because these glass are so thick. It's so thin that we need to make it number really low. Okay, that's it. We got what uh, what we wanted. And now let's see if we like the details here. You see, we have nice bronze metals. And we have nice glowing spiral inside of the glass and we have nice reflection of this spiral reflecting on our glass. And I really like it. We also have nice looking details like screws Yeah, it looks really nice. Let's make another rendering. Let's make it like this. Maybe we need to make it a little bit form. Maybe let's make the background a little bit darker. Copy this for a scene. In this way, our lights will go look much better.
Okay, guys, that's it. I hope you like my tutorial and see you next time. Thank you and bye.